Hi, I'm Teacher Michael again, and welcome to Science 9, First Quarter, Module 3, Week 5. Still, Non-Mendelian Patterns of Inheritance. Our learning objective for this day, or for this module, is all about explain the different part patterns of non-Mendelian of inheritance. Before we start or before we continue our discussion for this day, let's have a review first. What you're going to do is to identify if the following um, slides are for incomplete or it, it is for co-dominance. Wherein, incomplete dominance, both dominant genes are expressed as mixture of the two traits. So meaning to say, the mixture, the other is a blended, blending and combination of the two traits coming from the parents, making of another traits. On the other hand, the co-dominance, uh, both dominant genes are expressed fully in the organism. So meaning to say, the two traits coming from the parents were equally shown by the offspring. So the following side, for the following slide, what we're going to do is to identify if it is for incomplete dominance or co-dominance. Let's start. So, what does the picture show? It is for is it for incomplete or co-dominance? Nice, that is co-dominance. How about this picture? Does it show incomplete dominance or co-dominance? Yes, you're right. It's still co-dominance. How about this picture? It is for incomplete dominance or co-dominance? Nice, that is incomplete dominance. How about this picture? Is it incomplete dominance or co-dominance? Nice, that is incomplete dominance. How about this picture? Is it for incomplete dominance or co-dominance? Okay, that is co-dominance. So those incomplete and co-dominance are example of non-Mendelian inheritance pattern that we already discussed la last meeting. For the continuation, there is what we call sex chromosomes and sex determination. Most humans have an XY sex determination that is responsible for the gender characterization, characterization of an individual. Sex chromosomes control whether the organism will be male or female. Both males and females have 22 pairs of autosomal chromosomes and a pair of sex chromosomes, male beings X and Y chromosomes, while both X chromosomes are in female. Humans have 23 pairs of chromosomes, but the, 20, the 22 pairs are what we call the autosomes or the body chromosomes, while the 23rd pair is what we call the sex chromosomes. The sex chromosomes determine the, the, the sex of a certain individual. In female, their 23rd pair of chromosome is XX while in male, their 23rd pair of chromosome is XY. A male offspring will be produced when an egg fertilized by sperm passing on a Y chromosome. Similarly, a female offspring will be, will be a result of a fertilized egg through a sperm carrying an X chromosome. Therefore, there is a 50% probability having a male and female from offspring. So, once an, once a certain a certain um egg cell, okay, or I mean, it is the sperm cell that comes from the father which carry X, and the sperm cell that comes from the father still carries Y, and this one is the cell that carries X. This Y is egg cell that carries X steel that comes from the mother once they meet. So this one meet with this one, they produce XX. 
products will be, the individual they produce will be a female. So once this um, sperm cell that carries Y combined with the, an egg cell which, which carries X, they will produce a male. Another thing is that um, if the father, if the sperm cell of the father that carries X fertilize an egg cell with, which, which carries X also, they can also produce a female, female offspring. And another thing is that if the sperm cell that comes from the father that carries X fertilize the another egg cell, so there, there should, there's a possibility that they will produce a um, male offspring. So therefore, this is the X sex chromosome of the father, the sex chromosome of the mother, once they fertilize each other, once this X chromosome that comes from the egg cell of those mother fertilized by the sperm cells of the father. These are the possible um, genotype of their offspring or these are the possible sex of their offspring. So there is a probability of 50% will be female and 50% will be male. There is what we call sex-related inheritance. So these are the traits that has relation to our sex. Most of the time, more men in comparison to women are bald while lactation or milk production is common in women but certainly not in men. So there are traits that is common to a certain sex. For example, women, a bald, baldness. Baldness is common for men. But sometimes some, some women can also be bald. On the other hand, there's also a trait that that is only limited for a certain sex. For example, lactation or milk production. It, it can only be um, seen in women, but not in men. So these are inherited characteristics determined by the sex. The following are the three kinds of sex-related inheritance, namely sex-limited, sex influence and sex linked what is sex linked traits or sex linked genes sex linked genes are genes found either on x or y chromosomes which are inherited differences among male and a female sex linked traits determined by an x linked gene when an x chromosome takes control on the other hand the so-called y link genes are those located on the Y chromosome. These are the examples of traits that can carry by those sex chromosomes. So hemophilia is a kind of disease okay, and it's already a certain trait because this, this disease can be inherited and passed through to the different generations. So hemophilia can be inherited and hemophilia is carried by the sex chromosome and also color blindness color blindness is another trait that can be passed to a different generation because this color blindness carries by the sex chromosomes hemophilia is an example of x link trait it is a rare genetic disorder in which a person lacks enough blood clotting proteins caused by change in one of the genes since this phenomenon is cited on the X chromosome, female identified to have affected two X chromosomes cause the disorder. But if there is only one chromosome affected, the female individual is referred to as carrier of the disorder. So this hemophilia is a kind of disease that carried by the X. Okay, so when as this uh, in this phenomenon. When an X chromosome, females identified to have affected two X chromosome cause a disorder. So if the two if a female, both of her 23rd pair of chromosome ha carries that um, that disease, which is hemophilia, those they're both X carries 
the trait of hemophilia. Therefore, that female will be have uh, will have hemophilia. But if there's only one chromosome affected, the only one X affected by the hemophilia, the female individual is referred to as just a carrier. Color blindness is also another condition of the X link trait. So and this is color blindness another genes or traits that carried by the X chromosomes. These traits will be manifest manifested in females who have two genes of color blindness. Meanwhile, in males, there is only one gene of the disorder needed to express the phenomenon. For example, so color blindness, it is I uh, know you, you cannot um totally distinguished the true color of a certain object so if a certain female has this kind of x sex chromosome xx therefore she is a normal female if Berda but if one of her ex carries color blindness therefore the norm it's still still the female is normal but she is already um, called a carrier of the gene But if the two X's of those female of the sex chromosomes of the female carries the letter C, which which represents the color blindness, therefore the female is already color blind. On the other hand, this is the sex chromosome of male, so no um, traits carries by those sex chromosome. Therefore, it's still normal male. But if one of the X or if the X of the sex chromosome of the male carries color blindness, therefore, male is already color blind because this color blind only carried by the X. Color blindness is a linked gene or a sex link recessive trait. The gene for this trait is inherited through the X chromosome. So there is a problem regarding the um, color blindness. If a woman with normal vision has children with a man who is color blind, what are the chances that their children will be color blind? Will any children be, will be carriers of the trait? So in this problem, the woman is in normal vision. Therefore, its genotype for its sex chromosome is XX. Has a children, the woman has a children with a man who is colorblind. So, the man in this problem is colorblind. So, what will be its genotype? That is XCY. This is the, this is the genotype for the normal vision woman. And this is the genotype for the colorblind man this is the mother and this is the father the question is what are the chances that their child will be colorblind will any children be carriers of the trait so i will give you i will give you um, 30 seconds to answer the question Okay, timer stop. So, what is the possible answer? Okay, so this is the genotype for this one. X, X, C, X, Y. This is the X, X, C. And the X, Y. The question is, what are the chances that their children will be colorblind? So, what, you know, what is the sex of this 
um, offspring. That's correct. That's female. Is this normal female? Yes, but it is normal female, but it is it is already a carrier of color blindness. How about this one? What is the sex of this offspring? That's correct. That's male. Is it normal or colorblind? Yes, that is still normal. Normal male. How about this one? It, is it um what gene what is the sex of this offspring? Yes, that's that is female. So what is is it normal or colorblind? Yes, that is normal, but it is just it, it is already carrier of the color blindness. But hindi siya, pero hindi siya color blind. Just a carrier. How about this one? Gay. So this is a male, which is normal. So from those of four offspring, are there any chances that their children will be color blind? So the chances is. So their chances of having a colorblind male or fem uh, female or male children will be um, 0%. How about, will any children be carriers of the trait? Yes, there are two daughters who are carriers of the trait. Therefore, the answer yes there are there will be two children sex link genes there is another example which is the hypertrichosis pineoris it is a y-linked trait controlled by y by a y chromosome so this time this gene is controlled by the y chromosome and characterized by hairy ear in which are expressed in males alone this human condition can be inherited from a father who was the who has a disorder to his son, who in turn will pass it on to their sons. So these are um, traits that that which are carried by the Y chromosomes, and we all know that the sex the sex which which only the sex chromosome that carries that can only carry. This genes or this trait is what we call the Y chromosome. Therefore, it is only can be seen in uh, in the males because male is has only um, is the sex that has only Y chromosome. So these traits will be seen will only be seen or, or observed in males. There is another one trait, aside from the sex-linked genes, we also have the sex-limited trait. Sex-limited traits are those traits limited to only one sex. So these are the traits that are that limited only to one sex. Example, lactation is a good example of sex-limited trait that is exclusively exhibited among females. However, cattle carry genes for lactation on both males and females but although the males has this kind of genes um, males cannot still produce milk so again there is what we call sex limited trait so these are genes or traits that is limited only to one sex example lactation or milk production there is another one which is sex influence trait Sex influence traits are autosomal traits that are expressed in both sexes but more frequently in one than in one than in the other sex. One example of this is the pattern of baldness, which is expressed in females but is more often manifested in males. So so an example of traits that is sex influence traits are baldness. Pwede siyang makita sa parehas pero madalas makita sa isang sex, which is male. So there is another problem. Male pattern baldness is a recessive sex link trait in which affected people can become bald. So there is what there's a sample test cross here. Male with 
um, this XBY is a male bald person. So, a male bald, bald person mated with female with XB and XB genotype. So, this is a female normal. So, a male bald um, mated with female normal. We're in XP, no baldness, and XB, small letter B, male pattern of baldness. So these are these are the these are the crossing of the two parents, and these are their offspring. So the question is, what are the genotype of those given offspring? So the first genotype is this one. So it makes up 25%. of the offspring so aside from this one we also have this one okay and another one and another one so each offspring in the uh, in the planet square have their has their own genotype so they are dif they differ from each other therefore the the percentage for each offspring will be 25 percent 25 percent and another 25%. But how, since they have this kind of genotype, what are their phenotype? The first, the first one is female normal. So the first offspring is a female normal. How do we know from this um, information below? So the first um, offspring is X, um, big letter B and X small letter b it represents female normal so the first phenotype is the female normal what do you think is the phenotype of this genotype xbxb so this is a female bald so this is another there another um, offspring can be a female bald okay so that is a female bald the female normal here, since it is 25%, it also comprises 25%. Like female normal, female bulb here also makes up of 25%. How about the third? How about the third um, genotype or the third offspring? What's the phenotype of this genotype of the third offspring? Okay, very good. Since that is XY, Okay, it has XB, big letter B, that is, so, male, but it's still normal male, or male normal. That makes up 25% of the offspring. And the last genotype is what we call, uh, this is this one. It has X and small letter B and Y. What is the, what is the, um, sex of this, um, offspring? That is male, kasi XY. So, how can we describe this male? Is it bald or normal? Very good. That is male bald. That makes up the 25% of the offspring. For learning tasks for week what you're going to do is to answer the following activity number three that is on page 15 what you're going to do is to match um, column a to column b so those column for column a these are the parents and you have to match uh, the offspring what will be their offspring in column b for your performance task so this will be your performance as for week 5. What you're going to do is um, you have to do what I can do on page 18. Direction, make a family traits tree. Identify the traits of the family members from your grandparents up to your present generation. Choose among the traits you will track which are non-Mandelian traits of inheritance. Then draw each traits on the leaves of the family tree. So I have to explain why chosen traits are under of non-Mandelian patterns of inheritance. So I will give an example. Example, 
I will give an example. My the trait that I'm going to give an example is height. Okay, so my this is my family traits tree. Okay, so what you're going to do is only to choose one trait. Again, choose only one trait. So you have to um, explain or show to us how did you get that trait from your grandparents up to you. So what you're going to do, what I'm going to show to you is my is the height and I'm going to show it to you through the mother's side only. Okay, because um, I can I, I, I trace it through my mother's side. The first one is that she, um, my grandmother and my grandfather. My grandmother is tall, so you have to assume it's genotype, like this one. My grandfather is also tall, but it has heterozygous tall. Their, their child is my mother. My mother is tall. Okay, but my father is short. So, I need, I you have to assume their genotype. Okay? Yeah, again, you have to assume. So, my mother and father um, have their child. We, ha we, we, have, we have three siblings. Our family, or I have three siblings. Or we are three in the family. So, uh, my eldest brother is also tall. Me is short. But, but, but my younger sister is also tall. So, this is how you present your uh, family traits tree. Again, you have to you have only to show one trait. So, example, I only um, give an example for for my height. So, this is the first generation, second generation, and the third generation. Then you have to explain why is it an example of non Mendelian patterns of inheritance. Trait is an example of the, the family traits or three traits that I show to you is an example of non Mendelian patterns of inheritance because it shows that tall is a dominant trait. So since some of them has the dominant trait or big letter B which is tall, therefore they show being tall. But since my father and me doesn't have the big letter T which represents tall, therefore our height is not too, is short. Kindly answer also pay, um, the assessment on pages 20 to 21. The deadline of those activities or outputs for those activities and performances will be October 15, 2020. Questions? Do you have any questions? If you don't have any more questions, thank you for listening. Have a nice day.